that I'm going to see this. Why? Just click OK here and then click OK here. Let's delete this board. And now I have my screen and my units. Why? This is the first step. The second step to be done that you add nothing or using something as a datum for your you either insert the 12 minutes or something from AutoCAD like the site plan or the plan or the policy plan okay, point. if you don't have these, you can just go to architecture under architecture you have the work plane here you have reference plane the reference plane is something used like the construction lines in AutoCAD you just draw lines to get the snaps on the angles and intersections, right? So just click on this option, reference plane, and the shortcut on the keyboard are D. You can draw whatever lines you want, and you can exclude this line from printing. You can give the option that don't print this line. Okay? After that, if you are going to draw anything, let's say that you are specifying, for example, the setbacks now. Just click on any one of them and copy to here. For example, it's my setback. Copy again and copy again fine check the screen this is like uh, exclusive okay? no not exclusive reference plane these are just construction lines to get the snaps to, to, to make them as a reference for you and then you or you either to delete them and not to print fine now I want to use for example a wall let's see how it works I have the axis for the snaps as a reference for me. Fine guys. Now I can draw easily and I am sure that these are my setbacks that I have them. Fine. The first step before the break was to select your template. The second thing, specify your unit. The third thing, if you need to use your reference Fine. These are the steps. Any questions, guys? Yes, construction, architecture, plumbing, mechanical, whatsoever. Four aspects that are going to check them. Now, let's see something, guys. I have something named the project browser. This here. This project browser allows me and gives me the ability to browse my project. We have said in the previous class that the project in Revit is like a cake in space. You can slice it anywhere, plan section or elevation, and view whatever you want, right? Let's say that you are slicing your building in a plan, you will see this. Let's assign some windows and doors, and we will get to know that. Sorry for the screen. We are going to add some windows and some doors in our plan. I have the option window. I will have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 5. And I will have a door, 1, 2, let's see. Now I want to cut a section this way. Just double click on this icon. You will see your section. If you have clothes, section, sorry, clothes, uh, furniture, whatsoever, you will see everything in your section. Why? The second thing that you can go to the plan, you can view everything also. And if you go to the 3D, you can see whatever you want about your project. The power of our program that you can view your project from any point of view and from any view you want. <coughs> this is the first thing. The second thing that you can have all the views inside your screen. The option that I have just there is the window tiling option. I will talk about this option later. Fine. But the power that I can see all the views together. The third thing and the most important thing that whenever you are ch changing anything, let's say that you want to delete this one. Fine. You have it here, you have it here, and you have it here. If you move it, will be moved in all the views. 
if you change anything about this family, for example, it's larger now, you will have the enlargement in all the views also. Fine? And if you delete it from any view, it will be deleted from all the views in the project. It's a single model. Fine? The fourth thing, and it's really a powerful tool that you can have all the schedules done for you by just making some small text. Let's see how. If you are, for example, going to have the door schedule, the window schedule, the finishing schedule, whatever you need, fine. Just access to the panel where you have the schedules option. You will specify that you are counting something. I'm going to create a window. Don't try it, guys. Don't try it. We will have a specified class for schedules. Definitely. Now I have the option to make a window schedule. Fine. Just click OK. It will ask you what do you want to know about the windows in your project? Let's say that I'm going to use count. I'm going to use family. I'm going to use uh, image. By the way, you have to assign all of these things. You have to assign image, you have to assign these things. Let's say level point. Let's say width and height. Uh, say height, for example, width. I will have an option for the height. Fine. Now I have all of these. You can change the arrangement of your columns. Just click OK. Now you have the window schedule prepared for you. Just small clicks and small procedure, you will have everything. You have all the information about family. What is the family that you are using? You have all the information about the level. If you have assigned an image, you will see your image once you put the schedule on the sheet. You will see the image of the window. The cell height, the cell height means the bottom of the window. The height, the width, sorry, and the height. If you have used different families, you will have different numbers here and different names and everything. And you can just do whatever you want. You can change the appearance of this uh, schedule, for example. If you want to see the number or the count of all the parts together, let's go for sorting and removing, for example. I can just say, Grand totals, okay, it will tell me that you have seven windows in your project. Fine, and many other options we will talk about when we are talking about the schedules. So the power of our uh, software is you are modeling something, you are getting all the drawings that you need, you are getting all the views that you need, you have the ability to change in one view, everything else will be changed automatically according to this change. Fine. You have the ability to make schedules, you have the ability for the calculations, you have all the ability to do whatever you want. It will ask you for one single thing you have to do while working, to pay attention and to be accurate while working. If you are accurate and you are using a proper way, you will get all the information correct, true and track. Why? The power of this project, the program sorry also, that you have all the ability to edit whenever you want. Today or later, if you select any object and ask for any piece of, of information, it will tell you that it's a window and the width is X, the height is H, Fine. That is the power of our. Now, let's go on and proceed a little bit. I will close all the windows and will make one single window in front of Let's go for our elevation. If you read the browser, you have only level 0, level 1, and the site of none. So this uh, file is prepared for two stories Fine. I want, for example, to make... There's one here, but it's not here. Okay, we'll have it. Don't mind. If you don't have the 3D view, because you didn't access to the 3D view, you just click on this icon, you will have the view. You also don't have sections. You don't have sections, you just click on this file icon, then you draw where to slice, you will get the section. So it's according to the views that you are viewing. Fine guys? Okay. Let's say that you are going to create more levels. You have a building out of five stories and a roof and a top of the building for the staircase and the cycle plan. So you have many levels and stories. You will access the project browser, just go to any of your vertical views. Let's say that you are going to the elevation. Fine? Here, 
How many limits do you have? Zero and one. So they are only two limits. If you want to create more limits, you have the ability. If you have, if you want to change these properties like the height, the name, whatsoever, you can do whatever you want. Let's see how. First of all, you can access the architecture. Under datum, you will have the limits. So the third thing to be done after specifying the template and the units and reference planes, you have to set your limits. Fine? So go to architecture, under architecture datum, and then snippets. Uh, if you miss any description about any tool or the shortcut for the tool, just hold the mouse, don't click. It will give you a brief and shortcut, and sometimes you will have a video explaining what is the tool. Let's go for a little bit. The shortcut is double L. And now we are creating a little bit. You see these numbers that are appearing on the screen, the blue ones? These are the temporary dimensions. It always measuring from the close similarity. Like if you are drawing a level, it's measuring from the closest level. Fine. If I am a little bit away, I now have 220, 230, 240, blah, blah, blah. For example, I want 340, I'll draw my Fine. Just flex like the line of the map. Now, if you persist and you are paying attention for your levels in the project browser, now we have a third view which is level 2. Let's say that we are creating another one. We we'll just go to our picture and the data levels, then snap to your level and then draw your level. Fine guys, now I'm drawing randomly. I don't pay attention for the numbers. Let's say that you want each door to be 3.5 meters high. Just click on the level that you want to change then on the number that you are changing. Now you have the ability to insert your number. Let's say 3, 50. It's enter. Now it's changing. And if you are changing any level, it will change everything in the model that is associated to this level. The process of doing things in a level that you are associating elements to your levels. When, change, when you are changing the level, if this one is connected to level 2, it will be changing according to your level. If you are increasing the level, it will be higher. If you are decreasing the level, it will be lower. Fine? Right? Accordingly, the floor, the furniture, everything is changing according to the associated level. Fine? Right? So, level 2, I don't know what is the exact height of this level. Just select the level. Now you have two options. Option number one, to click on the height. If you know that it will be 7 meters high, so just write it down or type it in. Fine. If you don't know the exact height, but you know that the height of this floor should be 3 meters, for example, or 4 meters, for example, just select your level, okay? After selecting the level, click on this temporary dimension. If you click over this number, now you can make it 360, for example, and you click on that. It will move the selected object. So now we have two options to change the level that we have. The first one, select the level and then click to the associated number. It will be changed according to that number. The second thing, select the object, which is the level that you are going to change. You will have this temporary dimension. If you click on this temporary dimension and type any number, this level will be changed and moved according to that number to be a correct number. There is nothing like what you can do. you will have the ability to change the number according to your mind. If it's 5 meters and you want it to be 4.9, it's possible in AutoCAD. Right? And you can just right click, explore the dimensions, change the number, or right click properties and change the text overlap. There is nothing like that. Okay? It should be correct, so you will get the number. If it's not correct, you will not get the number. You only have the ability to make rounding for your dimensions. And I don't prepare that. You should be accurate, so you will not have any clashes in the side. Fine? Okay. Now, the third thing, let's talk about these symbols around the level. I have too many symbols, and I don't know what, what's for these options. The first thing, that you have these two graph points. This one, and this one. 
if you want to make it longer, uh, shorter, you can do that. And just notice that you have these snaps. You see the seven line, the blue one. That means this level is a snap to this one. If you move this thing, it will be moving the second one also. That's for organization and presentation issues. You just click this graph also. This graph point and this hidden lines mean that means that these two objects are aligned. Just click hold and drag. You will have the ability to make the snap with this one. You see? If you release the mouse, these levels will be aligned. If you move them or move any one of them, the whole levels will be changed. Not that it will be changed, sorry, the extent of this symbol will be changed. Why? Now, just click on this. It's not snapped to any of the levels. Move it alone. Click on this, move it, and snap it to this one. Click on this, move it, snap it to this one. Why? Now, all the dimensions are aligned from the right and from the left side. The second thing or third thing, I don't know the counting now, you can change the name of your level. Just click on this level and please always use proper naming technique. Ground floor plan, first floor plan, second floor, and so on. Don't just make uh, level, level two, level three, couple that. If you, if you have used, used level one, two, three, it's okay. But for me, I think it's more, uh, let's say, practical to use proper naming like ground floor, first floor, second floor, and so on. So I'm going to use ground floor plan. And always try to use the same lettering technique. So if you are using the first letter is capital, so always make a first letter that is capital. Ground floor plan. Point. Or ground floor. Might not be the ground floor plan. Now, after changing this option, if you click anywhere, it will ask you something. Are you renaming the corresponding views? What does that mean? That means that you have this icon here, but it's associated to too many options. It's associated to the views here. It's associated to the options here of the walls, of the stairs, of all of your objects. It's also associated and connected to other levels. So if you are changing the name here, please click yes. Why? Because when you are going to anywhere else to see any options, you will find it's ground floor here, ground floor here, ground floor there. Why? So just click yes. Let's rename all the views. I will select, click on the name. Now it's the first floor, right? Click anywhere. Yes, I am going to change the corresponding view. Now it's the second floor, right? Click anywhere. Yes, I'm going to rename. Let's make this the roof. Yeah. Sorry for the mistake, the rule. Yeah. And click and yes, I will change the side, I will make it four meters. Fine guys, these are the most important aspects about the levels. Let's see something else. You have this small tick box and you have a similar one on the other side. These tick box that if you want to see the symbol on the left side. Or let's just uncheck this and check this. This is the other side. Or you want to see it. Sometimes you have another level which is the top of the building, right? Just copy this. Let's make it very close to here and make it top of the building. Point. Now, what's the wrong and the mistake that I have just did? I can see and I can notice that these are overlapping together. I can see the name of this level. This one is hiding. It. So I have the ability to break the view, the, sorry, the level side, this small break side, you see it? Just a click over there, it will be broken. I can just move this graph point up. Now I can see all things together. I can just do it again. Click here, click on this break point, and just move this graph point up. Now, this 
gap point number two means that you can just change the angle of the breaking time. Fine? If you did it by mistake and you want to get it again aligned with your line, just click here, move this down until you get the snap, release the mouse. Another time, we can break this and it's broken. Fine? Fine, guys? Okay. So now I have the last option, but not least. Just click here, it's not. That means this alignment is existing. If you want just to move this sign alone, if you now move, everything is moving. Just under this sign and move it, it will be moved alone. If you want to relock it again and align it to your levels, just click on this point and move it over there, it will be aligned and it's stuck again. Fine guys? This is the most important aspect in our program, the levels. Always pay attention for your levels because always you are assigning and associating everything to the closest level. If you are building a wall from the ground floor to the roof floor, let's say, always if you want to draw this wall, I made a question. Let's go to the third map, for example. Click on the wall. Now it's asking me, you are specifying the height. Is it connected? Unconnected? If it's connected, you have to specify first floor, second floor, third floor, and so on. So if I specify that I am drawing a wall from the ground floor, let's say to the top of the building, just draw this anywhere, okay? Now I'm drawing the plan. You don't know where are the extents, right? Just go to the 3D. Now you have this wall. It's higher than the others because it's connected from the ground floor to the top. Let's go to the Windows panel and just please notice this guys now I will select this level this wall is associated to this level right I will just click here and make this 15 meters it's moving the wall with the level notice here please when I am changing the height just click here make it 13 meters so it's moving up and down. Let's say that I'm changing the ground floor. I have this one, right? Let's go to the ground floor. Click here. Go to the number. For example, minus 2 meters. Please pay attention here. Minus 2 meters. Click enter. It's moving everything. The base of the wall. The windows that having the offset from the ground. Fine. Everything is okay now? Okay guys. I want you to open the system, the program, and do the same thing. Assign a unit, assign reference planes, and use some walls. Sorry, assign levels, then we will work with them. Thank you. 